we got a great Michigan football report coming up for you today. Going to talk about Nico Collins, a little offensive line. Talk about who's making an impact, who we expect to make an impact this season. Before we jump into it, I ask you guys to subscribe. We had our best week of subscribers ever in the past seven days. Keep it up. Really appreciate the support. Hit that sub button if you forget and want to come back later. Just youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Come back. Hit that red sub button anytime. It's the Michigan football report from Chat Sports coming up right now. I am your host, James Yoder. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at James Yoder. The Michigan Football Report final show ever before 2020 fall practice starts is happening right now. Let's jump into our first story, Nico Collins update. And to be frank, there's not really much of an update. Um, we gave you some news on a show towards the end of last week on Nico Collins being enrolled in school, Nico Collins potentially coming back maybe Josh Gass putting the word out there and some players tweeting at him or are making you think it was but Jim Harbaugh did a uh, did a interview with John Jansen the Michigan football podcast through the school yesterday and here's what he had to say to the Nico Collins Ambry Thomas questions he basically said Jalen Mayfield is the only player to have submitted the waiver to opt back in. Mayfield's waiver has been approved, so he is a member of the 2020 football team. Nico Collins signed with an agent, Drew Rosenhaus, but makes him different than some players at other schools, different than Mayfield, and different than from Ambry Thomas is, according to everything we've heard, he is still enrolled in Michigan as a student. So he really wouldn't have to go through any um, you know, hoops or hurdles to join the team from an academic side. Uh, which Ambry Thomas, the, the ship may have sailed on that unless he's re-enrolled and nobody knows about it outside of the program. So, Nico Collins technically has 25 days till the first game to join the team. In all honesty, a three-year player with his kind of production, he could just show up and probably make an impact uh, without practicing at all. If you're enrolled in school and he gets the waiver, remember, he has signed with an agent, Drew Rosenhaus, so he would need that NCAA waiver it seems like they're just blanket approvals at this point you, you put the waiver in and you get approved so we might not know for a few weeks if he doesn't show up at practice tomorrow then that's a pretty clear sign in my opinion that he's not going to be back but i don't know from you guys will nico Collins play for michigan in 2020 go down in the comment section let me know. I'm going to make this the pinned comment on the video. I'll go put my answer on there. You guys do too. Type Y for yes and type N for no. All right, you guys have one more day after today to take advantage of the Michigan football jersey giveaway with our new partners, BetUS. So don't wait. September 30th, it goes away. Maybe we'll extend it. I'm not sure, but no guarantees at this point. Chatsports.com slash go blue. No, it's a new URL. Chatsports.com slash go blue. And then when you make your deposit, you see a box, promo code GOBLUE. When you do, you can email us, goblue at chatsports.com, to get a Michigan football authentic Jordan brand jersey. So the steps, once again, chatsports.com slash goblue. It'll drop you on the sign-up page for BetUS. Create an account. Make your first deposit. Use that promo code GOBLUE. Then email us, goblue at chatsports.com. We will send you a Michigan football jersey within a matter of days from the time you do that till getting your account confirmed from there. You have a Michigan football jersey hooked up for the season, and you can thank the Michigan Football Report, Jet Sports, and BetUS. Get going. Saturdays and Sundays are way more exciting if you got a little bit of side cash on the game. BetUS is where I make my bets. I recommend that you do as well. Next up, the offensive line. You got Jalen Mayfield looking like, I don't know, a hippie trucker, but that's his new profile picture. He's kind of a... Just living the dream with uh, with that haircut, but uh, I appreciate it. It's all good. He has been returned. He's returned. He's been approved by the NCA to resume practice. Also has cleared things on the academic side. You know, enrolled in classes, and you know, is probably playing catch up. But what, you know, really probably doesn't even matter if he's going to be gone from the team. Uh, you know, after the bowl game, if they do play a bowl game. But this is my projected 2020 offensive line uh, depth chart for the Michigan Wolverines. Now, Mayfield's going to stay at right tackle, it seems. It's the side of the ball he prefers, and Ryan Hayes got a couple starts last year when Lil John Runyon was out with injury those first two games of the season, Middle Tennessee State and against Army. So Mayfield, the right tackle, Ryan Hayes, the left tackle. An old name from last year, Andrew Stuber, 
going to shift to guard. He may have kicked out the tackle had Mayfield not returned, but he's going to stay at guard. Chuck Filiaga, guy I feel like has been in Michigan for like nine years at this point, but he's only a, a fourth-year junior. And then Andrew Vestardis, 2016 recruit, fifth year. He seems to have taken the, the job at center, at least in the limited helmets and pads only practices that Michigan has had over the last few weeks and what they had in the limited amount of practice in the spring before things got shut down with the coronavirus. So Vastardis is not a name that's a household name, but I have got no information that says otherwise, nor have I seen any other uh, media outlet projecting anyone but him being your star starting center. I know a lot of people were high on Carson Barnhart. That whole 2019 recruiting class, their offensive line, Trent A. Jones, Carson Barnhart, Zach Carpenter, Nolan Rumler, those guys are likely to be basically your backup offensive linemen uh, outside of one player and will compete for a starting job you know, next year after some of these other guys move on. Potentially Mayfield, I think it's pretty clear he'll go to the NFL. So that's your starting offensive line. One more time, Hayes, Filiaga, Bastardis, Stuber, and Jalen Mayfield. We asked you at the beginning of the show to subscribe. Give you one more reminder. Don't want to be too annoying, but it's important for our business. It's important for our jobs that we give you guys the best content and you guys hit that subscribe button. So go ahead and do it right now. Next up on the Michigan Football Report, let's talk a little bit of rumors on the freshmen with less than 24 hours to go before they step on the field in pads. They've been practicing in in, you know, uniforms, helmets, and shoulder pads, but no pads, no hitting just yet. Roman Wilson is getting a lot, a lot of preseason hype. The freshman speedster out of the state of Hawaii, one of Josh Gaddis's hand-picked recruits in his first year as Michigan's offensive coordinator. I'm excited about him. But I don't want people to overestimate what they're going to get from Roman Wilson. We thought, as fans, that Giles Jackson was an impact player last year. And, you know, he didn't do a ton. He had a punt return touchdown. He had a few reverses here and there. But uh, he didn't make a huge impact, Jackson, when it counted in the passing game, uh, you know, as a starter or, you know, in a four wide, et cetera. So are we going to get that from Roman Wilson? Some other of these paid sites are saying, oh, Roman Wilson's your best wide receiver. Roman Wilson is going to be a starter. Roman Wilson might be better than Ronnie Bell already. I'm going to say beep, beep. Beep. Back it up. Here's my wide receiver depth chart. Ronnie Bell is going to be your number one guy. Remember, this is all considering that Nico Collins, assuming Nico Collins will not be a part of the job. I think Giles Jackson is poised for a breakout year. Remember, he played the Ohio State game, which he scored a touchdown, as a 17-year-old player. He should have only been a senior in high school last year by any reasonable expectation of, of what grade you're supposed to be in at the age 17. Mike Sainer still uh, expect him to have a, you know, next step take a big step forward as a sophomore and then you've got Cornelius Johnson who scored that touchdown against Michigan State that didn't get a ton of playing time last year AJ Henning and Roman Wilson I've got the backups in the slot if Michigan starts going four wide you may see some of these guys on the field more than those three starters but the question to you is this who will be Michigan's leading wide receiver in the 2020 season you've got the four guys I think are most likely if Nico Collins comes back so he threw him in there the three starters plus Nico is the wild card. Type RB for Ronnie Bell. Type, type MS in the comments for Mike Sainer. So type GJ for Giles Jackson. If you think Nico Collins is going to come back, I think he's a pretty obvious choice if he does come back. And you got some inside info on that? Type in the comments with an NC. I'm going to go with Giles Jackson. But that's our show for today. The next time you see this handsome face, the best-looking Michigan football reporter anywhere out there, the Michigan football team will be back to playing. That's the show for today. Make sure to subscribe here. Hit the subscribe button for me. And if you missed any of our shows in the last few days, I got them for you right here and right here. Go Blue.